Good afternoon guys, happy Sunday from me. Okay, so I'm very excited for this video, but at the same time, I'm extremely nervous because I've been building up my starter for a sourdough for the past like, I'm gonna say eight weeks. It's been, a, it's been a while. And I think we're finally ready for the sourdough to be transformed into a sourdough loaf. So for today's video, I'm going to be making my first ever sourdough bread. I'm nervous, um, I'm hoping it works out, but at the same time, I've read so many different blogs, so many recipes, like people say you have to be extremely easy on yourself for the first one that you make because it is very technical and it's a huge challenge. So I'm kind of like ready and prepared to take on the challenge and I'm quite excited, but I am nervous because I obviously want it to work out. Like I've been building up this sourdough starter for so long and it's finally at that point. So I'm like hoping and praying that it works out the way I'm wanting it to. Anyway, so today is day one. This is gonna take three days. My bread is only gonna be ready on Tuesday and I'm starting it today, which is Sunday afternoon. So the recipe I'm using, I, I looked up a few and the one that I chose for me, it just looked the most simple and the most like beginner, um, but we'll see about that. It still looks, as I said, very technical and quite complicated. But day one, so today, all I have to do is make a Levain 11. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it, but essentially what I need to do is mix my sourdough starter that I've been creating with a bit of distilled water and and some flour. Now this is the flour I've been using to create my sourdough starter. So I'm sticking with the same one just to, I don't know, just to stay with the same things I've been using because clearly it's worked out well. So what I have to do is take 37 grams, sorry, 27 grams of my sourdough starter mixed with 135 grams of flour and 135 grams of water. So let's get going. I don't want to keep rambling. So I need 37 grams of this, not 37, why do I keep saying 37, 27, actually not that much, 35, oh 20, oh my gosh, I think, okay, I'm very tired, I keep saying 30, that is so little, okay, I thought it'd be way more than that, let's take a bit out and see, that's 31, oh, okay, amazing, so 27 grams of the active, Sourdough. And then we need 135 grams of water. Oh, does it say warm water? Okay. Alrighty, give me a second. Okay, so I had cold water. I needed to get warm water. It says 80 degrees. I'm not about to try and, I don't even know where I would start <laughs> to try and test how hot this is, but we're gonna go with it. So I need 135 grams of this. Okay, 135, we go, I mean 134, we're gonna go with it. Okay, and then I need 135 grams of flour. So let me just get a spoon. I love baking, but I'm not a very precise baker. I'm usually a go with the flow baker. So this is very out of my comfort zone, which is sometimes good. Levain, Levin, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, is combined. It literally just looks like mixed flour and water. Um, so I'm going to let this rest for 24 hours. So literally I can kind of only come back, to, well, overnight. But I'm only going to be able to do this tomorrow afternoon after work. So I'm going to let this rest. I think it's meant to like bubble and obviously like double up in size because... Yeah, we need this to create the actual sourdough loaf. So I'm hoping that works. I guess that's the first test to see if this actually starts to rise. But I will catch up with you guys again tomorrow. Good afternoon, guys. Happy Monday. Okay, so we are on day two of our little sourdough challenge, our sourdough bread challenge. I'm very excited. I was a bit apprehensive when I woke up because the Levain that I created yesterday didn't really look as risen as it should have been or according to you know the different things i've been reading it's meant to rise like by double and it definitely didn't 
but I became less worried when I opened it up because when I opened it I could see all the bubbles and I just could see how like fluffy and I don't even know you guys probably can't see but it's fluffy and it is bubbling so and light it feels very light so I think we're fine I think we're okay um today as I said it's day two and we are making the dough and then once the dough is made we need to do quite a few different folds and stretches I think it's called which we'll do at 35 minute intervals throughout this afternoon and then on the fourth one once it's done it goes in the fridge and it sets or sits in the fridge until tomorrow until we score it and bake it now I don't have any fancy equipment at all like you could use one of their fancy sourdough bowls I'm using my normal glass bowl later on or tomorrow when, when I score it I'm just gonna use a knife because I don't own any like fancy sourdough bread equipment hopefully one day I will if this works out and if we feel like well, if I feel like it's something that I want to do going forward, I'll definitely invest in that kind of stuff. But like for my first time, I don't feel like it's necessary to go too fancy. So we're going old school. We're using what we got. And as I said, today is making the dough. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have my recipe out. I've read it over a few times. So I'm a little bit more sure today of what I need to do. Um, okay, so we need to combine 560 grams of water, which is again around 80 degrees like it was yesterday, as well as all of the levain which should float, so I guess that's another little test I need to pass if it floats. And then 900 grams of bread flour, which is a lot, that is a lot of flour. So what I did about an hour ago, well not even, like half an hour ago, I boiled the kettle, and I'm gonna use that water because I'm assuming it's like far less hot than it was. Well, I might mix half of that water and half of just like normal tap water. So I need to get 560 grams of filtered warm water. Yeah, this is still pretty hot, so I think I'm going to mix this with, so 560 divided 2, let's do this maths, okay, 500 divided 2 is 250, so 280, and then 280 is what I'll do. Okay, now I've just poured literally tap water into this, so I need to get this to the 560. It just happens so quickly, I think I might use cold, cold, cold water for the last 60. <laughs> So the dough is all mixed, it is ready to go. Um, I was a bit worried at first because it looked very like sticky, but, and I was gonna add flour, but I didn't, thank goodness, because when I looked at the recipe again, it did say that it might feel a little bit tacky and like a little bit sticky, but as you go, that goes away. So glad I didn't add flour. Um, this needs to sit with a damp tea towel on top for about 45 minutes to roughly like an hour, which is honestly perfect because I'm about to head out with a friend for a little walk lunch and coffee date. So by the time I get back, this should have sat and be ready for me to move on to the next step. But before that, I do need to create like the salt water that um, you mix in as you do the next step, which is called, I think it's called the stretch and fold. Yeah, the stretch and fold. So before I go for my little lunch date, I'm gonna make the salt water mixture. I'm gonna put the, ta the damp tea towel on cloth, on cloth. Put the damp tea towel on top of this and then, yeah, reconvene with you guys a little bit later when we move on to the next step. Okay guys, so it is a little while later. I'm home from a very lovely walk, coffee, and lunch date, and I'm feeling energized. I'm ready to tackle the afternoon now, um, creating the rest of the dough for today. 
So the next step is to do a stretch and fold with combining that salt water that I created. So you do four stretch and folds in total. The first one, I use all the salt water. Then the next three, you just use the, the dough and fold that in. Um, obviously, this is the first time I'm doing it, so I don't really know exactly the technique. I've watched a few videos, so I feel confident in starting. Um, I think what I'll do is do it all and then chat to you guys after once the dough is completely stretched and folded. Um, because obviously it's like I'm doing the same thing, I'm just repeating myself a few times and you have to give 30 minutes between each fold. So yeah, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna probably take the rest of the afternoon and it's about, what is the time? It's quarter past three. So by hopefully like five, half past five, it will be done. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get started. You need to wash your hands. I'm gonna take my watch off again now that I got my sticks. I just wanted to make sure I had that on my walk. Um, I'm gonna wet my hands because I want them to be wet so that my dough doesn't like stick to my hands and I'm gonna slowly start to combine the salt water in for the first fold and stretch and then I will see you guys a little bit later Hey guys, so it is a little while later. I've completed the last stretch and fold and my dough is looking really good. Like I'm quite excited. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like we're onto something. Holding thumbs. Um, I didn't realize that once you've done all those stretch and folds, you actually have to let your dough sit for between three to five hours, which will take me to like nine o'clock tonight. So yeah, a little bit of an error there on my part, but it's honestly not the end of the world. I mean, I'm not really doing anything else tonight. So once it's sat and it's meant to rise, um, I think it's meant to like double in size. Then I cut the dough, I shape it, and then I put it in the fridge and we can cook it tomorrow. So it's gonna be a long night for me, but that's okay. I'm quite excited to just see how all this kind of turns out. What I'm going to do is take the dough from this bowl and transfer it to this one, which is quite a lot deeper. And then I'm just gonna put the, um, I think I need to put the cloth back on, I must look at that. And then I'm actually gonna put in the microwave because it's so hot and steamy in there, I'm hoping it helps it rise faster, which will obviously be more beneficial for me. So I'm gonna transfer it and I also need, I'm making two loaves, so I'm gonna need this glass bowl and another bowl I have to actually put the dough in whilst it sits in the fridge. So I wanna get it out of this, wash that bowl so that that's ready for me to use once I shape it. I don't know if any of that makes sense. But anyway, let me just transfer this to here. Let me actually roll my sleeves up because I don't know how this is gonna go. And let me show you guys. Okay, so I put the dough into the microwave. I'm gonna double check that it's meant to have the cloth over it. I assume it should because I don't want the top to dry out. So I assume it should have that um, damp towel over it. But I'm gonna wash these bowls, well this bowl. I'm gonna get the other bowl all ready and prepared. Um, so essentially what I need to do, I don't know if I'll show, you this, show this to you guys, is get two like bowls. I, I mean, you can use the like fancy sourdough containers. I don't have that. So I'm going to use two bowls. I need to put two tea, well, a tea towel on each and then dust them with flour. And I'm going to get all that prepared now just so that later once the dough is risen, I literally just need to cut it, shape it and plonk it into the two bowls so that I'm done. Because otherwise I feel like it's going to be a very long night. So I'm going to get that sorted and then I'll see you guys in like three to five hours. I'm going to make it three because if I do five, it'll be like 11 o'clock. So we're not doing five. We're definitely going to do three and we're going to roll with it. Doesn't really matter how much it's risen, I'm gonna give it three hours. <laughs>
morning guys and happy Tuesday. Welcome to day three of our sourdough loaf creation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little more nervous now because I just underestimated yesterday quite a lot in terms of like timing and I think my sourdough needed a lot more time to rise and do the bulk fermentation is what they call it. Um, I gave it three and a half hours, but I think it could have probably done with another like two or three hours, to be honest. So I couldn't do that. I needed to go to bed. I couldn't like wait up all night to wait for this thing to rise. So going forward, it's a lesson learned. I will make sure I have the time in my day to allow the proper like times of the different steps. But as I did, like it's a learning experience. Like it's what I can do going forward. I can only learn from it and grow from it. And this is my first time ever making sourdough bread. So I have to be just a little bit more kind to myself. But anyway, today is all about scoring the bread and baking the bread. So currently my, my oven is preheating. It's on the highest setting. It's very hot. And I've put a Dutch oven into the oven, which um, will be where my bread like bakes in or what my bread bakes in. So what I now need to do is take the loaves out of the fridge, place them onto wax paper and score them and like create the little pattern. I have no idea how to do this. I'm going to be a complete rookie. Obviously it's my first time. So I'm going to make the most of it and just have fun with it. And like, it's not the end of the world, how the bread is scored. I just want it to taste good. And I just hope that I didn't completely mess it up by not allowing it enough time to ferment yesterday. But it is what it is. We're here now and we're almost at the end. And yeah, I'm gonna keep going. So the oven is actually just turned off, which means it's preheated. So I need to get my loaves out of the fridge. I'm gonna score them and then we're gonna bake. I was gonna take it out but I've just had a look and I do think it needs another like I'm gonna give it like another five-ish minutes because I want it to be nice and brown on the top and right now it's looking a little bit too pale for my liking so we're gonna give it five more minutes <laughs> I created this. Okay, guys, I am so excited with how they look. I do think it's such a learning curve, this, and especially being my first time I've ever done it. Like, I'm not even. Like they look amazing, they look amazing. Like the first time I've ever made sourdough and like they look like sourdough, you know, it sounds silly, but they look like how they meant to, which is so exciting. But I do definitely know the next time I do it, I have to let that dough um, do the bulk fermentation for a lot longer. But at least it's like a learning curve and like I can do that next time. So I'm not even upset about it. I think they look really good. I think they look so pretty. They look so cute. First time I've ever made them. I am so chuffed. Um, I do now need to leave them between two to four hours so that they can cool because the cooking process still happens even though they are out of the oven. There's a lot of steam that's obviously like built up in the sourdough that needs to almost like rise to the top. So if I were to cut it now, um, all that steam would escape and it wouldn't have like cooked in the proper way. So I'm actually heading to lunch with my mom now. So I'm going to leave them to just cool down and I will obviously do a taste test and a cut and all that jazz when I get home from lunch and once they have completely cooled and yeah, once they're ready to be cut. I'm so excited. They look so good. Okay guys, so I'm home from lunch and it's been i would say like two and a half three ish hours so i feel like we're ready to cut it um i've just taken some photos because i really needed to document this moment but i do think in the next couple of days i probably will literally do this all over again i won't record it on youtube but i might um, put it on my instagram but yeah it's time to cut it i'm very excited i'm obviously going to prop you guys down so you can see and then we're going to try some I don't even know like how to cut this. Where do I cut it from? Well, it's crusty. Oh, 
I'm not saying it's bad, okay? It is very good. I'm very proud of myself. So I am really proud of myself, but I can see by even just like the look, the texture is a little bit more dense than like a normal sourdough. Um, and I literally just think it's purely because of that fermentation. Like it just didn't have enough time to rise. So I know I've said this about a million times, I'm gonna say it once more, but I feel like I'm excited because I know exactly where, I don't wanna say I went wrong, cause I mean, it looks so good, but I can see exactly where I can improve the next time. And it's literally just letting it rest longer. But other than that, I feel like my sourdough start is amazing. And I think my, the recipe is really good. And I think I'm quite, I feel like I'm a natural when it comes to like the scoring and like making it look, I don't know, somewhat appealing. So I'm very happy. Okay, I am going to try it. Let me just prop you guys up again. I love my height, except when it comes to YouTube, because I always just feel like my height is a huge hindrance when it comes to videos. Okay, I'm not going to have this much. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut like this piece that I've cut even smaller. I can't believe those holes. She's airy, guys. She's very airy. Oh my gosh. I am beyond impressed with myself. I think I've got one thing I can improve on going forward, but other than that, I'm gonna give my little, little pat on the back because the last three days have been honestly quite a big challenge for me and I was really nervous about it because I was like, oh, I don't want it not to work. I put so much effort into my sourdough starter. I think it's worked really well. It's so tasty. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I had to stop recording because I had another bite of the bread. It is so tasty. I'm beyond happy with how all of this turned out. Um, I do think I'm gonna close off the video now. This is definitely a different kind of video than what I'm used to recording, but it was so much fun and what a challenge. And I'm so happy I did it. And I'm happy with the way they turned out. They definitely have room for improvement. That is for sure. But for my first ever attempt at sourdough bread, I think I could give myself quite a big pat on the back. Um, if you got this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely um, go try this for yourself. What a little experiment, what a challenge. I wanted to do this so for so long and I'm so happy I've done it and I'm so happy I could put my starter to such good use. And I'm definitely gonna continue doing this going forward. Like I'm so excited to just improve and get better and better and hopefully eventually have like restaurant worthy sourdough loaves in the house. Um, but I'm going to close off the video now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. And I cannot wait to see you guys very soon. Bye.